Coach, uh, congratulations on a good season last year. Tell Thank us you. about this year. Thank you. Tell us about this year. Um, hmm. Well, we lost two very good quality seniors and uh, to one state and had a terrific career for us. And I think the, the, the big thing that we'll miss is the ball security that those guys provided for us. Um, Juwan was one of those guys you couldn't trap, you couldn't take the ball from him, and, and he made free throws. So he was invaluable at the end of games. And so we're, we're kind of looking to replace that with some of the guys that actually played a good bit when uh, he and Gary both were injured. Okay, we'll take questions on the front again. Your name and your affiliation, please. <clears throat> Jenny Carlson with the Oklahoma Most Important Question of the Day. Can you tell us about the pants? Where do you come by pants like that, and is there any chance you might wear them in a game? We were just talking about that over there. I think the only person that benefit from that is this guy, Dale Sparks, who takes pictures and makes pictures and sells them. I, uh, one of my friends gave me a gold suit to wear my first year. And they're still, I mean, that's still the hottest selling picture. And I don't know if I want to subsidize Dale any more than what I already have. So, uh, probably not. Uh, but uh, I went to graduation. I had to do a little speaking thing at graduation. And, and uh, President Gee came in with a pair of pants on like this. And I thought, boy, that's a great idea for media day. So I ordered me a pair. He wore, he wore uh, one gold and one blue <laughs> sneaker, though, Chuck Taylor's. I didn't go quite that far. But I don't have the bow tie either. He had the bow tie on as well. He kind of sets the, the, uh, sets the trends for fashion in our state. <laughs> Questions for Coach. We got a question on the F left side about halfway back. Hey, Coach, uh, me for Graham with Fox Sports. Uh, could you describe the decision last year when you got to that point of deciding to press and when you decided that this is going to be your philosophy from here on out? I was tired of losing. Uh, really was the biggest thing. I was just trying to, you know, I think sometimes uh, it's good to do something different. And I kind of looked around the league and really nobody played that way. And so it kind of gives you an advantage to a degree when you do something that other people don't do. And we did it at Cincinnati in a different way. It was more three-quarter court. It wasn't the full court, but it was three-quarter court. And then it just got to where it was so time-consuming. And in and, and all honesty, I, I got a guy named Danny Fortson that wasn't very good in the press, but he was a great player, and I didn't want to get him in foul trouble, so I quit pressing. And... Um, and then I happened to run into Kevin Mackey, who I have the utmost respect for. I think he's uh, did a better job with pressure basketball than anybody that's ever coached college basketball. And I ran into Kevin, and we started talking about it. And, and uh, we talked on the phone a few times. And then Kevin came to Morgantown and, and, and watched us practice. And, and he said, you know, you've got, you've got the personnel to be able to do this and do it well. And we, you know, we continued to talk, and actually, we, we still continue to talk about some different things. But, uh, and basically, what he said is, you have to be committed to it. You just can't, you can't throw it on. And if they score a couple layups, get out of it because then your guys lose confidence in it. And I think what it did for us, it gave us, uh, it gave us great team chemistry because everybody knew they were going to play. You know, how much you played was up to you. That's kind of what I tried to explain to them. If you play better, you're going to play more. If you don't play as good, you won't play as much. But you're all going to play. And so everybody went into the game knowing that they were going to get in the game and have an opportunity to play. So I thought that was good. We got a question on the front right here. Chris Niederstadt with Chris Dinerstahl with the Pittsburgh uh, Trippy interview. Uh, just describe uh, the versatility that Essa Ahmad uh, brings to the lineup this year. Well, we're trying to, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get him up to speed as best we possibly can. Uh, he's a talented guy. I think, he, you know, he's a guy who can bounce it at six foot, whatever he is, seven, six foot eight. 
Uh, he's a guy who passes it well. Uh, the speed of the game, I think, is, is affecting him right now. But, I mean, it's just a matter of him kind of getting used to it. But because he, he does pass and he sees the floor really well, you know, he can make shots, obviously. Uh, he's, a, he's a very good rebounder. You know, when we went to the Bahamas and, and uh, it wasn't certainly like playing in this league, but we did play three games there and he was our second leading scorer, second leading rebounder. And he's one of those guys who just knows how to play. I think that's the first thing that I, I noticed when I watched him. And I think the more I watched him, the more I realized this guy has a great aptitude to understand basketball. I think that's his, his biggest attribute. It's, it's, it's kind of like what Deshaun Butler was you know, for us in terms of understanding the game, understanding what's supposed to happen. Further questions for Coach? we got a question on the left-hand side. Aaron Swartz with Sprint Center here in Kansas City. The new rule change closely guarded for a team and for a coach who you like to see your guards guard. What, how does that change your mentality on defense, especially in the game? I don't know. Um, I've been trying, been back and forth with it in my in my head here since uh, the rule changes came out. I don't honestly, I don't know. We're going to scrimmage here in a couple weeks, and what we got a scrimmage with Temple and uh, see how see how much it's changed. You know how we have to play. I I'd like to sit here and give you a very intelligent answer, but. <laughs> Obviously, I can't. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think we're going to continue to try to do what we do. We may have to uh, make a modification or two, but I'm not sure. I don't think five seconds makes any difference, if that helps. I mean, I, 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 think, I, think, I think there's a, there's a uh, Oh, I, I think there's an a idea out there by a lot of coaches that maybe you do soft pressure to burn some clock. And so, but I think at the end of the day, what's going to end up is everybody's going to run a quick hitter into a ball screen anyways. And that's what everybody did against us for the last 30 years because we tried to not let people run offense. So we ended up guarding ball screens or spreads. And I, that's what's going to happen. But I don't think that change as much it just probably be more bad shots taken maybe but other than that I don't think there's much difference further questions for coach we have time for about one more question got a question about halfway back <coughs> Mike Casaza from the Charleston is that good morning Bob good morning Mike your point guard situation um you had a pretty good with Jawan and Gary last year is it strictly Javon and Tariq now? Could it include Dax and Jay Sean, or do you foresee maybe passing the ball up and using as many players as you can to get to where you want? There's not a lot of absolutes, but absolutely Jay Sean will not be in the equation. Um, Dax could be. Uh, Dax ball skills have gotten better. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, I don't really want to change Dax's mentality. Dax is a kind of a, a guy who goes and tries to score. And we need him to score. So uh, I, I don't, I don't see him playing a lot there. He could. He's he's skilled enough to play there. I um, mean, you know, obviously, when when Beetle got hurt, that that hurt our depth at point guard. But Jayshon's getting better and better. Tariq's getting better and better. It's just a matter of them, you know, being there and understanding their responsibilities a little bit more. But I think we're okay there. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for your comments. Are we done already? Would you like to talk more? Probably not. I'd like to talk more, but I'm not sure with these kind people out here, maybe. Well, thank you, Coach. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate it. We're going to take a short break here for a couple of minutes, and then Curtis Shaw is going to come up and talk about the rule changes and some more information about officiating. Can I ask questions? Yes, sir, you certainly may. <laughs>